I guess many people will be aware that I do research in freezing of gait. I've come up with a number of hypotheses about what's going on in the brain and we found some interesting ways of exploring that using virtual reality technology combined with MRI scanning. And I guess what we're really aiming to do there is to see what it is that we might be able to hone in on and therefore treat. So in terms of the treatments, I think what we would say is well established is physiotherapy. The problem with freezing of gait is that you're relying on the deep part of your brain, the basal ganglia, which is the part that's most reliant on the dopamine that's missing. And when you overload that part of the brain, there's too much activity there, and unfortunately the thing comes to a grinding halt. When we ask people to do physiotherapy and things like the, 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 the big movement programs that you'll see out there, effectively what you're doing is you're relying on the part of the brain, the cortex, the thinking part of the brain, to make those movements. And of course what that relies on is a lot of thinking, and of course normally we don't do that. I see a lot of frustration uh, between partners and patients where the partner will say, look, I just I keep saying to him or her, look, you have to lift your feet up, you have to do this properly. And the truth is, of course, that we all cut corners. Many of us who drive a car will not drive a car today as we did on our driving test. We'll take shortcuts where we're not turning our head properly or making exaggerated movements. And the reason is because it's very demanding on the brain. So physiotherapy where we're trying to make it, if you like, a conscious movement more automatic so that you drill into somebody, you have to make these large movements, can be beneficial. The risk of, of freezing, of course, comes down to falls. So again, the physiotherapist can help with balance and here we really strength, strengthening exercise for the core. So these programs can also be very, very helpful in that regard. In terms of, if you like, at the fringes of research, uh, people are looking at different techniques for treating freezing and one of the uh, more recent approaches uh, was the idea of using a stimulator, not to stimulate the brain, although people have looked at stimulating the brain for freezing of gait, with various results and, and there are some centres who are still proposing this as a treatment for freezing of gait, stimulating a different part of the brain that we normally use uh, compared to controlling the fluctuations of Parkinson's disease. But what we're seeing more uh, of recently is the idea of stimulating the spinal cord to see if we can, if you like, trigger the movement in the legs and stop them from coming to a grinding halt. So that's going to be an exciting approach. In my own research team, we actually have uh, a couple of projects. One where we're using brainwave recordings, electroencephalography or EEG, to record what's going on in the brain just before someone freezes. So if we can identify that patch, it may be possible for us to, if you like, alert the patient that they're about to have a freezing episode and maybe even, if you like, change the settings that might go into their deep brain stimulation system. Um, and of course, you know, just to warn them so that they don't fall over. One of the other things that we're currently doing is research where we capture uh, the electrical signals within the brain and the way that we're doing that is in uh, co a collaboration with some fantastic uh, doctors um, where we are actually going to the operating theatre and recording from the deep electrodes that are put in during the surgery for Parkinson's disease and while patients are awake under the operating theatre conditions they're actually using a virtual reality environment to move their uh, body through that virtual reality environment using foot pedals and we can listen into the brain to see if there are any signals there that might give us a clue what could we change in advance of those feet sticking to the ground. As I say, these are at the edge of our research knowledge at the moment, but it is encouraging that people are trying to find new approaches that will help with reducing this terrible symptom.